Deep vein thrombosis, commonly called DVT, occurs when a blood clot forms in a deep vein, typically in the lower leg, thigh, or pelvis, although it can also occur in the arm. Symptoms of DVT can include unilateral redness, swelling, warmth, and pain in the affected extremity. DVTs can cause life-threatening complications, including pulmonary embolism, a condition where the clot travels to the lungs, causing sudden respiratory distress and chest pain. The pathophysiology behind DVT formation involves three mechanisms known as Virchow's triad, which includes venous stasis, hypercoagulability, and vein injury. Venous stasis refers to slow blood flow, often caused by immobility, certain medications, and heart failure. Hypercoagulability may occur due to deficient fluid volume, pregnancy, oral contraceptive use, or smoking. Vein injury is often caused by fracture, severe muscle injury, or major surgery, particularly the abdomen, pelvis, hips, or legs. Venous wall damage may occur due to venipuncture, certain medications, trauma, and surgery. Chronic diseases like cancer, heart disease, and lung disease can also increase a client's risk for developing DVTs, as well as other risk factors such as obesity, central venous access devices, inherited clotting disorders, and a previous history or family history of DVT. When a client experiences signs and symptoms causing suspicion of a DVT, rapid diagnostic testing is vital to prevent complications. Diagnostic testing includes a D-dimer blood test to detect abnormal clotting activity and duplex ultrasonography to visualize disrupted blood flow due to the presence of a clot in a vein. If a pulmonary embolism is suspected, a computed tomographic pulmonary angiography is typically performed. Treatment typically starts with anticoagulants such as heparin and warfarin to prevent clot growth and reduce new clot formation. In severe obstructions caused by the clot, thrombolytic therapy may be used to dissolve the clot, or a thrombectomy may be performed. For recurrent cases of DVT, an inferior vena cava filter may be surgically inserted to prevent pulmonary embolism. Nurses play a crucial role in preventing DVTs by encouraging early ambulation after clients are confined to bed, such as after surgery, serious illness, or injury. Routine health teaching is provided to prevent DVTs in clients at risk, such as stopping smoking, maintaining a healthy weight, avoiding a sedentary lifestyle, and wearing non-constrictive clothing. During long periods of sitting, such as traveling for more than four hours, clients are encouraged to get up and walk every one to two hours or raise and lower their heels while keeping their toes on the floor. If a DVT is diagnosed, nurses administer prescribed anticoagulants and implement bleeding precautions while monitoring for signs and symptoms of excessive bleeding. They remain vigilant for signs of potential complications of DVTs, including pulmonary emboli. Nurses evaluate the effectiveness of interventions in preventing or treating DVTs and revise the nursing care plan as needed to meet identified outcomes for each client.